Um, we know that some folks are refing football or coaching football tonight, and there's uh, at least two others who have family or business reasons that they're not here. So um, we'll get started with uh, this, and I'm um, going to ask if there are any amendments to the agenda. Ben. I'd move that we add at 5D the report of Joe and Jim on the construction management firm proposals and selection of the construction manager. Okay. Is there a second to that? Second. Thank you, John. All in favor? Aye. 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 All right. We'll add that um, by, at 5D. All right. At this time, I'm going to open it, um, us to the uh, public comment. If there are any folks that would like to make a public comment, this would be the time. You also have time at the end of the session as well. Adam. There's no other public uh, that are wanting to comment? Question. I haven't seen any hands okay. yet. Um, I, so I just want to make a quick comment as a uh, board member, but really as a, a parent. Um, if we, I don't think it's on the agenda, but if we could have the district put out an update about the busing situation. Um, I know there's been some challenges across the district, uh, Reading included in terms of consistency and accuracy about timing and, and pickups. And I, I'm aware that uh, employing bus drivers is a challenge for Butler, um, but if we could have some update to the general community, I think that would go a long way. All right, thank you. Anybody else? All right, I'm going to close the public comment and we'll get started with the reports. First, from the superintendent. Um, first, I'd like to welcome Lori Beland, who is our new assistant principal from the Stock Elementary School. Um, of course, glad to have her on the team. Um, it was, it's been a short time since our last board meeting, but I've had the opportunity to meet with the design team of the strategic, uh, the new MDSU strategic plan. Um, the last time we met, we reviewed the proposed uh, revisions to the portrait of a graduate, and we began to identify key themes for the new strategic plan. Um, the next meeting that we'll have is we'll have, focus on those areas and begin to um, address individual strategic plan goals. Um, let, uh, we, myself, Ben, and Carrie have attended two Wednesday afternoons of the Green. Um, those have been very well uh, attended, participation with the community, lots of great conversations, and I think the full range of young families to uh, retirees in terms of asking those questions about the new build and getting to see the design and ask some questions. Um, last week, uh, myself and six other principals and school leaders attended the Ed Leader 21 conference in St. Louis. Um, I will see it's an opportunity for us to really, again, um, think about how a portrait of a graduate really informs the work that we do, how do we fully utilize that document and that resource um, really to advance student learning and engagement. Um, lots of questions, uh, lots of uh, talking to educators from all over the country. There were about 500 um, educators and school leaders there. So that was pretty exciting. And myself and Julie Brown had the opportunity to present on our middle and high school special education literacy program. Um, we had over 60 people um, come and view and a few more who want to come and visit and see that our, how our program is working. Um, so it's pretty exciting. Thank you, Sherry. Are there any comments or questions for Sherry? All right, we'll move on to the Director of Technology and Innovation, Ross. Good evening, everyone. Um, I'm actually gonna try to share my screen to walk you through some of the enrollment um, numbers that I put in the board book. I may need to allow someone to let me do that. I'm sorry. It takes me it takes me a minute. Sorry. Um, so um, this is the time of the year when we share out our enrollment numbers. Um, 
these are some really important numbers because they directly impact our school funding. Um, and so there's a lot of complexity to these numbers, and I, and I want to walk you through and show you um, some of these pieces. So um, just as a reminder, so the average daily membership um, is what the number that we're really interested in. Um, and, and there's some interesting ways that it's calculated. Um, so the ADM period, the way the, the AOE defines it, is the 11th to the 30th day of school. So that's the period when we really want to make sure that our attendance is accurate, that we're capturing any changes that happen outside that period don't reflect our ADM numbers. Um, students in different grade levels get different ADM values. So a pre-K is worth different something different than an elementary student, which is a different value for high school students. Um, ADM is only received for the students who are residents of our operating district. So not residents of Pittsfield or Weathersfield or any of the towns who made tuition to us. Um, and we can get ADM for students who are not enrolled in our schools, which is very counterintuitive, but those are be our pre-K students who are um, going to private pre-Ks who are applying for funding to do that. Um, so we actually capture them in our ADM, but you don't see them in our enrollment numbers. Mm -hmm. um, so with all of that, um, just to show you, I, I wanted to start by um, just showing you uh, a graph of, of where our September enrollment has been for the last couple of years. Um, so overall, our enrollment of 1,001 students is down from 15 students from last year. Um, it's, the enrollment is almost exactly the same as what we had in 2017. Um, statewide, between the period of 2017 and 2023, the enrollment was down 4.9%. Um, so just as a point of comparison, this, we're, our, we're doing better than the state in that, in that measure at the moment. Um, this overall enrollment change doesn't reflect some of the changes in our district. So. In 2019, West had one pre-K with 17 students. In 2022, West had five pre-K classes with 66 students. And this year, West has three pre-K classes with 43 students. So some of these numbers are changed by the number of offerings that we're able to make. So um, just to take them with a grain of salt, but that's where we are. Um, and you see that sort of the, the COVID bump that happened in 20 and 21. Um, from a school perspective, um, these are the numbers for the schools. Um, small changes at Barnard, um, Killington, Reading, and West, um, pretty similar to where we were last year. Um, larger drop at Prosper Valley um, due to a, a small fifth grade class that came in, only 34 students came in. Um, so, so that's that's why that drop at Prosper occurred. Um, there was an increase of five students at the middle school, high school, which which is a good sign. Um, and I, I just wanted to point out the variability between grades um, within a school. So, for example, you know, in in, in Killington, there are eight third graders and twenty fourth graders. Um, so, this is some of the challenge of of working with. Um, you know, small schools, and, and sometimes there are some big jumps. You notice that we have 49 uh, first graders across the district and 81 kindergartners. Um, so, so there's just a lot of variability from, from grade to grade. Um, our funding source information. So this, um, this shows the tuition funding source. Um, so, so the top line there, the operating school district, these are the residents of our towns um, that are, are part of the district. Um, so this is what feeds into the ADM. So it was down 1.8%. Um, you see those numbers there. There are some small changes with the other categories, but um, our, our, tuition, our tuition funding source from other Vermont school districts, so these would be students from Pittsfield or Stockbridge, um, those are up um, a little bit from last year. I've included um, one of these spreadsheets to show you. Um, so this is a breakdown by town um, and grade um, across the district, um, just so you can see sort of where students are. Um, and our Woodstock has 333 students, Barnard 133, and Killington 107. Those are our three biggest towns 
Um, and then lastly, um, this is a different way of looking at it. I haven't shared this one before, but um, looking at um, schools and then towns. And so sort of identifying where, where we have students who are participating in interdistrict school choice. Um, so you can see some of where those students are residing and then where they're going to school. So I've highlighted those in yellow. Um, so you can see that information as you go across. And the last piece is just a question about comes up kind of this time of year where where are our students going? Um, and so this is a graph showing uh, we had 23 students um, unenrolled from our schools this year. Um, the majority of them went to a school in a different state or country. Um, we did have some students going to five students going to an independent school in Vermont and a couple into a college program. How did, how did they go to a college program if they didn't graduate? Yeah, so there's an early college program in high school, um, and it's a specific, I can't really speak to the details of how the program works, but the way it works from an from the enrollment standpoint, if you enroll in an early college program, you unenroll from your high school, and you participate in that program for the year, <clears throat> and then the day before graduation, you are re-enrolled and graduate and then can proceed on with your um, post-secondary aspirations after that. So it's a specific program in, in the state of Vermont. Jen, do you, is there any? It's a great summary. Yeah, um, a lot of our state colleges will offer it. Students will access that to have the college experience early. Your historical numbers going back to 2017 are those that's not ADM numbers, those are raw student numbers. Correct. These are I it's very tricky to kind of get the same, make it apples to apples comparison and, and make it the same. So this is just literally where were we in the middle of September um with the enrollment reports that we were giving to the board mm -hmm. um based on that. So so yes, yeah. Counting noses. All all the data yep. here is counting noses, not the not um correct. Equalized pupils, correct. 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 And this is the last year. Uh, before, uh, next year is when the new waiting study gets applied. Is that correct? Twenty twenty five. Yes. Okay. So, so still be under the old system here, where they do calculate our equalized pupils. Okay. And when was pre K first offered? Five years ago. Yeah. Twenty seventeen. So right. Um. So had it before last year, Kelly then. We started in 2018. Mm -hmm. uh, fall 2018. Redding's had it for a while now. Other schools have had some big, been small, but West really went in in 2017. We are noticing fewer students enrolled in home study. Um, last year we had 60. This year the report is 35. 60? 60, 60 last year, 35 this fall. Huh. It'd be interesting to know where those 25 students went. Any other questions for Raf? Good data. Thank you. Yes, thank you. Thank you. All right, next is, uh, let's see. Jen wanted to. And then Jim. Nope. Sorry. I wasn't here last week. I was sick, so I wasn't able to get my report in, but I have a few things to share. Um, so I guess I'd like to begin in the area of assessment. We are nearing the end of our assessment window right now, which means that next week we'll be done with all of our star testing and our dibbles testing, early local assessments so that we can adjust our teaching for our students. Um, I just wanted to say thank you to all of the people in our buildings that are making that happen. That is not a light lift, um, but provides very meaningful data for teachers and interventionists. Um, in regards to PD, we have our second cohort of letters happening right now. So anyone who wasn't trained in letters last year, so how we teach reading in our district, they're being trained now. So it's really great that we have this ongoing training system happening in our district, and Julie Brown is conducting that at the moment. Um, this Wednesday, as maybe you know, is our first Late Start Wednesday. 
So two hours worth of professional development, a little reminder for families. <laughs> um, it's focused on equity and we have some really great topics happening. Um, we have equity through literacy, student behavior, mathematics, portrait of a graduate and deeper learning. And then some teachers have chosen personally relevant topics as well that they're digging into on their own. Um, so teachers are really looking forward to that and often collaborating with others through that process. Um, in terms of our program, um, the middle school is engaging in a really deep self-reflective process. They're partnering with AMLI, the American, no, the Association for Middle Level Education, uh, to do a full self-assessment of their practices according to the guidelines from AMLI. Um, and resulting from that, hopefully, will be some good strategic programmatic moves for our middle school. Um, and that will be happening over the next couple of months. So we're really looking forward to the outcomes of that. And then finally, for a few of us around the table, um, last month we had some exchange students visit our homes. And I just wanted to say thank you to the department for making that happen. Um, maybe Owen can tag on and talk about that a little bit because Owen yeah. had a student in his house. Yeah, yeah it was an amazing experience. Um, I still talk to my students every day on WhatsApp, so that kind of blows up my phone. But um, it was like, really, I mean, I, I'm so grateful to um, to the entire people in the district, Mr. Villanueva, our, our language program at the high school. You, you had an extension too. Um, and uh, I think it was it was good for them, good for us to have some exposure to a, a pretty different culture. But um, yeah, it, it was it was it was really cool. So the students came to us from Madrid, and then our students will be going there in April. So they're looking forward to that. Absolutely. So, yeah. That's my report. Thanks for hanging out. All right, thank, thank you. you. Um, Jim, do you have a report for us? Sure, we're in the middle of budget season. I have trained most of our administrators on how to enter their own budgets in our new software, and the rest will be trained before the end of the week. Um, we have an aggressive schedule that I shared with you uh, at the last board meeting and the finance committee, and we'll be, once we get uh, the first round of the budgets, we will uh, meet as a team here at the district and then present I'll present to the finance committee. We'll look at uh, what we're asking for, what um, what we'd like to add, what we'd like to cut, what we'd like to do, and um, see we, where we are. And then we'll be back to you uh, in early December with um, a budget for you to review. Um, I have two members of my team that are going to um, a five-day training with eFinance. And it is e-finance eight hours a day for five days training. And so this is the software that, that we're on um, now. And this is just a great opportunity for them. Um, they've already connected with two or three of the instructors and um, have booked some time with the instructors outside of the uh, the, the group lessons. And um, so to me, it's exciting to get them out there. They're excited about go going and just to bring them up to the next level of um, awareness of what the software is and how it works. That sounds like a really fascinating conference. <laughs> Eight hours of accounting for five days. Yeah, yes. Uh, I'd be yes. Way over my head. They, they, they'll be coming back all excited about it. I know they will. <laughs> <laughs> and and um, just so everybody knows, um, the RFP for our owner's rep is out, and we will be addressing that with a committee in the near future. Okay. Thank you, Jim. Um, Owen. Um, yeah, Aiden is at a soccer game in, in Brattleboro, I think, so good luck to him. Um, I was just going to briefly talk about um, our high school seniors. Some of them have made some athletic commitments, so big shout outs to them. They're in the board book. Um, I think a lot of other students are focused on PSATs and star testing, and it's kind of crunch time. Um, uh, for them, but uh, as for our summit, which is coming up fast, um, I actually just checked, we have a lot of applications, so we're doing really well. Um, we uh, we confirmed the speaker, our breakout session topics, and uh, and our venue for, for that, and that's going to be on the 11th of October. Um, so uh, the, uh, the Social Action Club has again kind of resumed meeting 
with some new freshmen and kind of a uh, new advisor actually. Um, so it's been good to see that in action a bit more in the past one or two weeks versus uh, before. Um, and I was gonna talk about our, our 20 something Spanish exchange students who, who left the Upper Valley to cap off their visit in New York City. Um, it was an amazing opportunity to host them and to, uh, to talk to all of them. So I, I'm grateful to the team in our district and our schools that, um, that organized that trip. So I think that went really well. Um, as for what Aiden wrote down, I think he was talking a lot about um, sports and, and uh, freshman elections recently happened for their class officers and student council. So we have a, a healthy incoming class uh, of, of leaders. I think every position is full, every student council representative is accounted for. So that's good to see. And um, I think broadly we're doing pretty well. It was It's spirit week and we conveniently put that also on picture days. That was some bad scheduling, but um, <laughs> but I think, I think that's what's up. I think we're in, in decently good shape. All right, any questions for Owen? Is picture day on Barbie versus Oppenheimer? Today? It's actually on, you're not gonna believe it, it's on PJ day. Oh. <laughs> Isn't that genius? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Could have been worse. Could have been worse. Could have been party. <laughs> That's true. <laughs> All right. Well, thanks a lot, Owen. Glad you're here. Yes. Thank you. Um, I, I don't know if I told you, but I was had to reach out from somebody from the VPA asking questions about what we did, uh, how we handled the student representatives, if we had them and all of that. And when I wrote out, you know, how things have changed and how it happened, I got a, a personal note back from him saying, wow, I'm going to send this out to the rest of the the districts in Vermont. So um, bravo for you and Aiden and your seat at our table. Thank you. Always honored to be here. Thank you guys. Thank you. All right, uh, we can move into the um, time schedule appointments. The first being the budget priorities and assumptions for fiscal year 25. I think Ben and Jim are- I think we're up. Mm -hmm. Let's do that. Um, I guess, do you want to make- Randy, could you add that as a co-host? Sure, I can do that as soon as he logs in. Oh, good point. <laughs> Raina, even from a distance. <laughs> That's Take okay, because Raina forgot to send the board book out to some of us. <laughs> Myself included. <laughs> I didn't catch that until she said that. You know, we don't have to fight fire with fire here. here. <laughs> it's all good. Coming. Okay. I'm in. Oops, I had it. What was that? Uh -huh. There we go. Hey, we're not seeing you. Yeah, I had to take it okay. down. Sorry. For a second to get on the screen. Here we go. All right. Jim, I believe these are your slides. Yeah. Okay. So this summer, uh, your leadership team got together for a retreat. And we talked about budgeting and we looked at a four or five year look into the budget and uh, sustainability of the budget and uh, the impact of decisions we're making and also the impact of the new building, which is going to impact our budget at some future date. Um, if you want to go to the next slide. So just as a background, a year ago, we met and we did what's called the SWOT analysis. So strengths, weaknesses, opportunities, and threats. 
And um, what I did is we we put stickies next to our, our strongest strengths and our strongest or weakest areas and our threats. And these are some of the highlights. You know, can we sustain our current budget? What about grants? Um, as I think I've mentioned before, um, a lot of our grants are based on free and reduced lunch. Our free and reduced lunch and numbers are down, which means our grants are shrinking. Um, do we have room for growth? Do we have physical room for growth? Do we have room for growth in our program? So two different growth areas. Um, how will increasing costs impact us? Um, as we've all experienced, even in our personal lives, the uh, costs of living are going up and they impact us just like they do everybody at home. How will the new middle high school affect other buildings? Um, if the new middle high school brings an influx of people in one of our communities, do we have the capacity in the elementary school in those buildings for the elementary students that come in with them? Uh, can we continue to recruit high quality team members? We've been extremely fortunate. We've only had a couple vacancies that we've struggled with. Uh, a lot of school districts in uh, Vermont and New Hampshire have lots of vacancies and we've only had one or two, but it's an ongoing issue. And then wages. When we did this, we were still in negotiations with support staff. Um, since then, so we've settled with the support staff contract, but we are negotiating with teachers this year. And wages in a market that has leapt forward and up um, where it makes us less competitive. And so, you know, how do we address that? Um, one of the things that we looked at is our current FY24 budget was 14.2% 14 14 over the FY23 budget. Keep in mind that includes all the Warren articles. So the actual budget was only up about half of that. And the rest of the increase was the Warren articles for the high school for Killington and for the um, the 4.2 million that we raised for the design and those other projects. But that was a 14.2% over FY23. Um, I've done some forecasting and we're, we were looking at a 6.2% increase um, in April when I did this or in, in June when I presented this uh, for FY25. A 4.2 and FY26, a 4.2 and FY27. <clears throat> then FY28, which is where I had projected the first financial impact from the new build, is a 26% increase because of the cost of that. Now, keep in mind um, that we've got a group of people raising some private funds, which will offset some of that impact. Um, we have a state legislature that is talking, which is a start of at, um, funding some of the uh, school buildings. We're hoping by the time we get around to paying, they actually take action on it, but right now they're talking. But this is a concern of ours because in five years, we're looking at a 65% increase in our budget. And we do have increasing revenues in FY25. We've got a close to $800,000 from the waiting study that's coming in from the state. So we have some offsetting revenues. So although this is kind of scary looking at it, when we look at the revenues, it's not all scary. Um, our tuition student count at the high school is up by a few students. Keep in mind, every tuition student we had at the high school is $20,000 of revenue. We had 10, that's $200,000. So that's important. And I know Ben has captured some of that, not only in tuition students, but in resident students in his plan on the new build. Um, some of the, yeah. Sorry to interrupt, but question on the state funding. If if the state lifts its moratorium and decides to put money towards new construction, and we've already built our school and had our debt or our bond passed with the voters, and we're already putting private money towards paying off that bond, and, and then all of a sudden the state decides they want to start funding new builds, like, will we have any claim on that? Like, how do we sort of keep our I, I think I think we have claim, and the reason we have claim is the legislators pushing it hard at the state level are all from Burlington. And Burlington job project is way ahead of ours on their uh, process, and they're not going to let Burlington um, suffer if um, this funding goes through. 
So if they cover Burlington, they'll cover projects after Burlington. The other thing, and this is a conversation that Ben and I have had, we've done nothing with it yet, but we've talked about it, is the state front loads building aid, which means if they're giving us 25% of, for sake of conversation, 80 million, we'll get 20 million up front. Okay, which means then we only have to borrow 60 million. So the task force, that the legislation that created the task force for new build includes in it language about addressing current needs. So the survey where they audited our building and we came in number two is the worst building, that is part of the data that will be used to decide who gets money first. So that's written right into the legislation that created the task force. And, and so if we do temporary funding through the construction, do permanent funding at the end of the construction, we may be in a position to receive state funds before we even have to borrow. Mm -hmm. Okay, which would be the best scenario. Those are all moving targets and things we need to keep our eyes on. That's something going back to when Charlie Kimball was the Woodstock rep. I was pushing him to include in legislation a look back provision to say, you know, projects that have been passed in the past, say, five years. Let's see. So these are, there's a lot of moving parts, and I don't have a lot of answers yet, but there's a lot of moving parts. Um, some of the drivers of our increases, as we look at this, is we're negotiating teachers' uh, collective bargaining uh, agreement. Even if their ask isn't big, there it's a large group, so it's a, a large impact to the budget. Um, health insurance has been averaging 7% a year lately. Property uh, liability insurance. We had a 24% surprise increase this year after they told us in December it would be 6 or 7%. Um, migrating uh, grant funds, uh, I already talked about a little bit, but currently we have just shy of $1.2 million of wages and benefits and grants. Now, most of those are not in the ESSER funds. They don't sunset at the end of this school year. But as our grant funding shrinks, we need to migrate some of these back to our general fund. And our food service operates as, as a deficit. We know that. We're not surprised by that. But we have to properly fund it, and we've not properly funded in our budget. Okay. Next screen, please. Other impacts on, on taxes and budget is decrease in grant revenues, loss of tuition students, which we seem to be recovering from, lower and free reduced meal numbers. And Killington approved housing projects. I just want to touch on this because this is a huge positive impact, I think, on our budget. But there's workforce development of about 250 homes that's going to start taking place in Killington. And at some point, those homes will be built and occupied. And even if each home has half a child, that's 125 kids to our district. And if 50% of those kids are in grades 7 through 12, and the rest are in K through 6, um, that puts 65 kids, more or less, about 60 kids at the high school, and the rest at the elementary school in Killington. It's going to, Killington will be bursting at the seams, and we need to look at that, but all of this adds to our weighted uh, student and our um, ADMs and all that, and brings in state funding. Also, it increases uh, Killington's grant list and tax base. So that's a very positive impact on us. Now, from our SWOT analysis session last year, um, our questions were, are our programs sustainable, including athletics? Are we using our staff time effectively? Uh, do we need additional staff? Can we add additional staff? Uh, support wages were too low, but I think that's been addressed in negotiations. And one of the biggest concerns of the team was catastrophic failure of the high school facility. Um, to that end, we've done, we're, we've got a staff time effectiveness we're working with, with um, um, what's, what's the group at the elementary level? Oh, with Dave Levison in terms of the yeah. new solutions K-12. New solutions. So we're doing some of this work right now to make sure that we um, are doing things right and doing it well. We're studying, you know, making sure that we are using staff effectively 
and determine if we need additional staff or if we can reallocate current staff or current positions to other needs. So we're spending a lot of time on that. If you remember last March when we added the assistant principal um, to the elementary school after the budget was approved, we also had a list of other positions or other needs from our other buildings. Um, those needs included um, an increase of an, a para at Barnard, a point eight counselor social emotional profession at Barnard, a uh, half time interventionist at Barnard, uh, some minor building reconfigurations. Reading had a couple um, additions. Go ahead. Um, West, we, we had the assistant principal, which we added. Prosper Valley had some uh, additional positions. At Prosper Valley, I believe you're aware, but um, two teachers were added through a grant this year. Next year, the grant will only pay for one of those positions. So if we keep the second position, and there's no reason to cut it, but if we keep the second position, we'll need to fund it. And so those are some decisions we are going to have to make as we move forward. Uh, Killington had a few um, additional um, requests, uh, pretty minor, but they were there. And so, yeah, what are our next steps? What do we do with the new solutions K-12 scheduling, um, which is what we're working uh, with to help us uh, at the elementary level? What do we do with staff requests, staff requests for March? We're doing a lot of talking about those right now. Um, in July, we weren't sure what we we're going to do, but um, they're on the table right now at the leadership team. Uh, where's our enrollment going? Um, Raf told you where it is right now, um, which is good news in that if we bring back one additional uh, pre-K at West, it will actually increase again, and that we're really, we're pretty stable right now with our enrollment. Uh, what do we do with high school sports and special ed costs are always a, um, always a concern. They, uh, one child can move in and cost you a lot of money. And these are things that we're always watching. So these, these, are, these are the things that we're considering as we move forward building a budget to bring to you. Uh, questions for Jim on the kind of the long-term budgeting um, presentation. Sorry, I'm trying to get back to my agenda. And I, I thought we, uh, I think there's another item in here on the timeline. Yeah, the timeline, and we can skip the third one. They can look at that when they want. Okay. Just to kind of give a preview of coming attraction. Oop, sorry, I should probably share with respect to the, you see it. <laughs> Okay, so this is our timeline. It's the same format as I used last year. Um, we'll be having some conversations among ourselves, principals and uh, directors and the finance officer are working now on staffing, on infrastructure needs. Um, Joe brought some things to B&G at their last meeting, and I believe that he'll continue that conversation with B&G as he hears some principals about things that they they want to um, see brought forward. Uh, we'll be talking about different uh, things on the 16th of the Finance Committee. Um, we're gonna be reviewing our grant positions, make sure that we move the ones we have to so that we can move forward with that and not have surprises. SLT will review the first um, draft of our budget. That's the leadership team on November 2nd. Uh, if we need a, a special finance committee meeting, we'll have that, and we will bring the draft budget to the board for presentation on December 4th. All right. Gives us an exciting couple of yeah. months in front of us as we, yeah. uh, the weather turns cold and we all look for something to concentrate on. Yeah. And we've laid out a couple of special meetings if necessary. Uh, we haven't needed them in the past, but if necessary, the door on the calendar. Yeah. This is very, very helpful. This is just business as usual, right? And if we're going to pass the new bond, don't we have to keep that budget on almost the exact same schedule? 
Yeah, we have the same. Uh, we'll need to have the um, uh, that's the costing for the new build. Um, the deadline for that is December, so that we can get it on the town meeting. Um, so we know how much we're going to, be going to the taxpayers to act for. So on, de on December fourth, I will bring you a draft warning. Um, we may have a blank for the dollar value on the new build because we may not have a number yet on the fourth. But in early December, we will have that number from the from the CM. Yeah, and the long kind of the long pull in the ten is typically um, you know your your final um, equalized pupil count from uh, AOE. Um, so that's uh, typically comes late late December or January. And you're kind of scrambling to make the town meeting agenda. So. Um, sooner we get that and the uh, costing information will be ready to move forward. Okay. Can I, can I hey, Thana, um, can I request that those special finance meetings, uh, those dates get sent out at least to the finance committee so I can put those on my personal radar? Sure thing. Thank you kindly. Um, I was going to say, um, maybe we can send a thank you note to our former board members Jim Half and Jennifer as Killington uh, Planning Commission members and uh, what's Kim, Jim's role in the select board of if there's a big boost to our uh, school enrollment based on a lot of their hard work up in Killington. You're here. Jim, Jim Half continues to make his presence known even when he's not on the board. <laughs> he, he still visits us regularly. <laughs> I'm sure he does. Shocking. That is just shocking. <laughs> <laughs> Great. Um, other questions? We'll return the agenda to Carrie and keep going. All right. Well, um, Elliot tells me they've got 30 plus policies to be reviewing this year. So he's going to try to keep it under 10 at every meeting. But um, we always got some for us tonight. Yeah, we, so we have four to discuss, um, nothing too remarkable. Um, we do have uh, one up for adoption, which is uh, F3, fire and emergency preparedness. It's uh, the drills. This has been presented a number of times, and so we're just asking tonight to have that adopted. Oh, hang on, sorry. Yeah, sorry. Point of order, are we yeah, at 5B? I, 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 oh, we skipped? Yeah, yeah, sorry. Sorry. we weren't on the, the committee reports. Yeah, all right, sorry about that. Thank you, Matt, for keeping me on track. Um, all right, so a logo update. I think there was something here in the Raina you know, and, and Bob. Yes, Raina and Bob are going to tell us about that. It's all your Bobs. <laughs> Take it away. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, logo update. Yeah, we had uh, hoped to have all the deliverables in Raina's hands today, but ran a little behind. But they'll be in her hands probably tomorrow, and they'll consist of customized the long skinny logo for letterhead for all the districts and the SU, for all the schools and the SU, and then blank versions of the graphics that can be customized in Microsoft Word for any special uses or whatever anybody wants to do with them, where they can put custom text right into the logos. And hopefully that'll be in Raina's hands in the next day or two. Well, thank you, Bob and Raina, for working on that. We look forward to seeing them. Um, do we need to take action or are they ready to be accepted? And used? I think we kind of gave them their head on this and said, we trust you. Yeah, just want to double check. Yeah, right, Raina? We, we said that we felt you and Bob were the dream team on this. And there's no need for us to have a 19 person discussion on that shade of blue or those kinds of things. So if anyone has strong feelings, however, feel welcome. So we'll, to it, it be to us for those of us who are buying the things so the official ones are going on uh, yeah Raina, Raina can okay. distribute that okay. yes yes um all right um we need to re-sign a general obligation note i think jim you're going to explain what we need to do in june you you as a board addressed and signed a general obligation note for the three loans that we took out for 
the construction projects and some of along the line the original is misplaced i don't know if we misplaced it here or got lost in the middle of the bank wants it but the bank wants an original signed document so i have new documents to be signed uh, a lot of signatures from carrie just one signature from everybody else i've got the ones you originally signed if anybody wants to uh, see them yeah. Ooh. All right. So we'll pass that around. And um, Jim, do you need folks to stop by here? And if they're not here tonight, as many as we can get. Yes. Okay. This one needs your signature on every page and everywhere else. Okay. To probably get trapped on that. All right. So, folks, if you can stop by in the next few days um, and sign if you're down this way and make an effort to come in, and who will have it, Jim? Um, Rain will have it or I will have it. Rain is waving your hand, so she'll have it. Okay. Thank you, everyone. Okay. Does the finance committee have another? Do you want to go to 5D? Oh, yes. Sorry. 5D. We're going to talk about the construction. Um, this. Uh, yeah. Uh, Jim, Joe, we tasked you guys uh, at the last meeting with uh, reviewing the bids that we, we opened at the last meeting and uh, giving us a report on the three and a recommendation for uh, how to move forward? Sure. You want to join me, Joe? Sure. Um, Joe and I went through the three bids. And as you remember, we had. Um, I can pull them up if that's helpful. <laughs> we had a bid from DEW Construction, a bid from uh, PC Construction, and a bid from um, uh, Whiting Turner. And the apparent low bid when we opened them was from DEW. Um, as we looked at them, what we discovered was that in their bid, DEW had excluded uh, number seven of uh, on the items that were included in the bid. And number seven, just so that you don't have to look it up, was for the teardown of the existing building and the construction of the turf building. And so they had bid for 21 and a half months worth of work while the other two were bidding in the 32 to 36 month uh, time frame. Um, so that's a contributor, not necessarily the reason they were lower, but a contributor why they were lower. Um, the next day I did have a conversation with DEW uh, because we had not received the detail on their general, um, general conditions. And they provided the general conditions in our remarks the next day or the day after, but shortly after that, they provided additional uh, bid numbers for the um, for the difference. You know, we because it was considered incomplete, we uh, talked to our attorney and. Uh, yeah, why don't we? Um, uh, apologies for this, um, Carrie. Um, but, uh, if you'll uh, entertain a motion, because we're going to be talking about um, a matter in which we've received legal advice, and we'd like to share it with the board. Uh, I'd like to move to go into a brief executive session uh, in order to uh, talk about that legal advice. Right now, and we want to yeah, the end. since we're having this discussion. Okay. Uh, is there a motion for an executive? You made the motion. Is there a second? Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 All right, shouldn't be too long, correct? No, you're gonna read. So, Raina, you are going to um, remove those who are not on the board, and Raina's gonna go into sorry um, another space, and we'll come get you. What an audible, nice job. Thanks. Yeah, I like that. That was really good. Yeah. Jerry, you're now the host. Sorry. I had made you the host before you finished speaking, and now I can't take it back. <laughs> okay, so do you want me to send you out? You'll have to put me in the waiting room. I don't know why I can't get to get back to the Zoom. Oh, here it is. That's why. All right, let me share my screen, and this will be the call. We're also still recording, just a reminder. Okay. Once you stop, I'll share my screen and we'll look back. Um, do you want I'll put the other individuals in the there we go. 
Lydia. But when people are going into the waiting room, board members need to stay here. Only those who are not on the board need to go to the waiting room. <laughs> you know, we're just now at only an hour in this meeting. Oh, huh? I, I think we're like 20 <laughs> minutes into this meeting. But... Sherry, don't forget to start recording. I did, Raina. Thank you so much. Thank All you. right. Well, I can't see. I can't see these things anymore now that you're the host. Can we bring everybody back out of the waiting room? I did. I closed the room. All right. Um, do we have a motion coming out of the executive session? Uh, yes, we do. So I'd like to make a motion that the board uh, disqualify the due construction bid as uh, non-conforming and non-responsive. Second. All those in favor of the motion, please say aye. 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 Any, aye. any opposed? All right, and is there another motion? Yes, there's another motion. I'd like to make a motion to award the construction management bid to PC Construction, being the lowest of the two bids remaining at $8,931,131. Second. Any discussion? I would just, um, just say thanks to Jim and Joe for digging deeper into our RFP bids. Yes, thank you. All in favor? Aye. 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 All right. The motion passes. Both motions pass. All right. Thank you. Thank you for your patience. Those in the waiting rooms. Thanks, everybody. All right. Does the finance committee have um, another report? We we don't. We'll spare everybody more finance <laughs> details. Okay. Um, we've got our timeline moving forward on the budget. All right, well then I think Elliot is ready to present some Great. policies. So we have four policies again. One uh, for adoption is F3, which is a fire and emergency preparedness drill. It's really concerned with the drill. We have looked at it two other times. And so we're ready for um, a motion to adopt it at this point. Is there a motion yeah. to adopt? So moved. Second. Second. Uh, we need a second. Yes, ma'am. Okay. Uh, any further discussion on the policy before we um, move to adopt? Okay. All in favor, please say aye. 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 All right. The policy okay. passes. Okay. Um, we have uh, three now for first reading. So uh, F4, which is the companion one to uh, F3 is, um, and these were state mandated for this year, um, concerning access control visitor management, essentially dealing with maintaining safe environment on our campuses and the process of dealing with visitors. And um, we would like to present it as a first reading this evening and for a second uh, reading in November. Anyone have any comments or questions for the policy committee? All right, do we need a motion to move it to a second reading? Is there a motion to move it? I'll make a motion. Thank I'll you, Ryan. Second. I'll second. Thank you, Thank you Sam. All in favor of moving it to a second reading, please say aye. Aye. Any opposed? Aye. Right. 
All right, the next one, one Elliot. The next one is C2, which is one of the, um, we have about 30 um, policies that the BSBA has sort of um, taken a look at and revised. Some of them are just wordsmithing, but this is one, one that we're going to bring up this evening. So this is on student drugs and alcohol. Um, part of it uh, is just updated terminology and some cooperative agreements. Um, we did bring this up at our meeting, uh, our policy meeting a few weeks ago. And um, this is what is presented here. But subsequent to that, um, we've had some, um, some uh, additions of just being exactly specific about which product. So I'd like to add that in for this evening to make that for our second reading. So I can describe it rather than just bring it up. It's not that big a deal. But basically, um, the suggestion was that we put CBD products, supplements, and or edibles, THC edibles, after cannabis in the definition of two, and THC, CBD, nicotine, and other substances as um, before vaping devices in the, also the definition. So just to specify exactly, it's, it's not exclusive of those. It's inclusive. It's at least those. So we're not... We're not, but we're our specifying some. So I wanted to make that as um, as the addition for our uh, second reading for next uh, for November. Okay. Does anyone have any questions on this policy? No. Oh, yes. Um, just responding real time. So is, is CBD product like a can that's got soda can that's got CBD in it is that a is that a drug violation? I think that's what by definition you just gave yes. that would be a, a violation. So and I think that was I think it is um, as far as I for understand. Under, not for under twenty one. Yeah, I I really don't know anything about it. So is it like is it against the law for someone under eighteen to have a CBD soda? I don't know. I'm asking. Yeah. I, I don't honestly think there's a gauge on it, to be honest with you. I, I don't know. I'm going to have to look that up now. Yeah, I think that was written from Annie Lugar's. And, and that, was the, that was the exact example, as a matter of fact, that there was, uh, there was a, a seltzer that was CBD supplemented. Okay. I found it cool. <laughs> Sorry, I didn't quite hear. Was there an was that question answered one way or the other definitively, or what are you saying was the example? Yeah, the example was a CBD seltzer. Yeah. Um, Restricted to persons over the age of 21. Oh, we're talking about yeah. okay. Vermont okay. and other maps. That's what I saw. That's what I was gonna say. So it would have been included anyway in our language, but this is it just makes the language much more, you know, we gave some examples, but essentially it's okay. And that was the recommendation of our students. Yeah. So it's okay. really the law says, uh, says that it's level dependent, which is interesting. So reading the way it's worded, it says no possession limits on hemp CBD, but that has less than 0.03% THC. So it has above 0.03% that it's got a legal limit of 21. Whatever that is. Of, of, the, of the THC. So I would just, sorry, I was sorry, I shouldn't have cut in. So I would just make sure that we did that definition is stating that it's a THC level that needs that can be found no higher than in a CBD product. So it's not the CBD level. So we just might want to make sure it's probably not the time or place right now, but when policy takes that back to just clarify that definition. Well, we're not putting. I mean, here, here's the way it, read, it reads so that does, it, it gives those examples and then it says, or any other controlled substance as defined by state or federal regulations um, or statute. So that, it, it doesn't go into each one of them, but it's giving those as examples and it says, or any other controlled substance. Yeah, that seems appropriate. If you know, deferring to applicable law, right? So if there is a CBD product that's not a controlled substance, then it would be legal under the policy or be a permissible under the policy. All right. Is there a motion to move it to a second reading? 
So moved. John, thank you. Second. Thank you, Josh. All in favor, say aye. 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 Anyone opposed? All right, thank you very much. Okay, and lastly for this evening is C27, which is student distribution of literature. Essentially, this is uh, dealing with regulating non-school sponsored literature notices posting on either uh, uh, the bulletin boards that are uh, physical or electronic. And um, we're looking for um, this as a first reading this evening and second reading in November. And we and you can take a look at the policy as it is. Any questions? All those in favor of moving it to a second reading, please say aye. 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 <laughs> You can also wave your hand at me. Spontaneous, but <laughs> any opposed? <laughs> All right, I think that it's moved to a second reading. Thank you. Thank you, Elliot and Policy Committee. Uh, buildings and grounds. Um, I'll I'll kick it off, but maybe Joe and I could just do this in tandem. So we sure. we did have a. a B and G committee meeting on September eighteenth over at uh, KES. Um, well, I'll, I'll just go, I'll, I'll go by memory. So, um, I would say the, the, the biggest update on the current projects is everything that we were doing over the summer is complete, but for the heating conversion that's ha happening at the high school and they're out of the classrooms with the distribution system and there's work remaining on both boilers. And we've had a couple hiccups, one being that two pumps that we needed, um, with, that we thought were on order, um, the order itself was canceled by the supplier when they learned that those pumps weren't available. So now we're scrambling to find replacement pumps um, and Joe can talk to whether we found those yet. Um, and then, um, we talked about the bids that we received on the HVAC systems for Killington and for Reading. Those are up, those are general upgrades to the HVAC that are covered under the ESSER funds and the Vermont efficiency Vermont. funds, and you have to spend those by the end of next summer. So it's important that we get through those RFPs and make the awards uh, so that work can be done during that time frame. Um, we weren't in a position at that meeting to make the awards because we were clarifying some items. And, and then finally, we spent time on all of the projects proposed to go in the fiscal year 2025 budget. And we've made a recommendation to include all of those that Joe presented. Um, the top one number for buildings and ground was around 500,000 to go in the budget, but that's subject to uh, some uh, estimates that we need on projects going on at, at, at KES. Um, but yeah, getting heat to the high school is the is the big issue. So uh, we did locate some alternative uh, pumps and we hope to have them in the next two weeks or so. Um, we should to get them to the iron boiler room and uh, they can work in uh, weekends. They've been doing some late nights, uh, fingers crossed here in the next few weeks we'll have things up and running uh, there. Um, we did talk about the RFPs for Killington and Reading Elementary. Um, we've declined those bids and we're gonna resend them out and ask for new bids because they both came in uh, over budget. <clears throat> we were limited to 500,000 per project uh, through Efficiency Vermont. So uh, Killington came in over a million uh, Ready Elementary came in right around five hundred thousand dollars, but uh, one of the RFPs came in didn't include everything, so we're going to reject them both. Ask folks to rebid. I reached out to Efficiency Vermont, and we're going to break up Killington uh, into two separate projects. We're going to try to get the first one, uh, the major improvements done for around a half a million, and uh, we're going to again rebid those. Hopefully, in the next few weeks, get them back out onto the street. I think uh, we had talked about uh, capital improvement projects that came on the list um, of stuff that I just thought 
offhand that we'd be putting into the uh, uh, the budget. Um, I haven't spoken to any of the principals yet, but I think they're going to be getting back to Jim uh, with some requests here by the 14th, I think, of October, if I remember correctly. So I'll have a better idea of uh, what else BEG will need to include. Other than that, we're working uh, against trying to make this happen here. It's the final push here. I can't stress that enough. So I, I meant to ask this after our meeting. If if it starts getting cold and we can't turn heat on, is there a backup plan of some nature? Sweaters, <laughs> uh, <laughs> No, in all seriousness, like I, I remember being in the house without heat. They brought in this like giant standing propane tank and they actually lit it in the house. Yeah, no, we can't do that. But they <laughs> yeah, I could be trying. We tried. Try <laughs> Heaters and everywhere. I do have one source of heat, and it's in the main hallway. Uh, it's a makeup air unit, and that'll blow some heat. Uh, I, I believe it or not, that building does hold some decent heat, radiant heat, if we keep the windows closed in the morning, which is key. But what happens is folks immediately come in and open all the doors and stuff. I'm really, really, I'm pushing extremely hard uh, with our contractor to make this happen. Uh, they're aware that we have literally weeks left. Um, but I can't bring external heaters into the school. That's a no no. Fire marshal would shut us down pretty quick. Those little packets when you go ski. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. You, you might just drive by and there'll be little fire pits all around the house. We could do that. We could do like burn barrels outside. <laughs> There's a photo op. Just worst case scenario, let's say it wasn't ready in a few weeks and it was going to be. Three months. Uh, is that something where we say dress warm, or is that something where we say uh, we're going remote? Yeah. So what we would so. probably do is um, shift gears, and I would try to at least get one boiler up, and we could heat, in theory, the middle school side because we're already on hydronics there. Oh. High school side, I do have some heat there. It's located in the green model that long hallway which would disperse but the problem is the ad portion um kids down here stem lab well stem lab is, has we could get some heat in the stem lab so we could in theory limp by no guarantees uh, I'm, I'm, I'm not gonna sign that paper come make it look pretty yeah right but again i i am i am the squeaky wheel every day Thanks for tweeting. <laughs> That's it for buildings and grounds. All right. Well, it seems like there's never a dull moment in the buildings and grounds world. So, sometime, some point, maybe you'll get your rest. Name for that day. <laughs> that might be called retirement. <laughs> Stop. <laughs> no, I didn't say that. Stop. All right. Um, negotiations, hiring, and retention committee. Um, the negotiations committee of two, which is Bryce and myself, we, we were arguing internally about who's going to chair it, um, has been reached out to from the um, the association. We have settled, I think, uh, possibly on the dates of uh, the days of Wednesdays, hopefully starting very soon to begin the process of negotiations. Anything else, Bryce? Nope, oh, you're good. <laughs> Thank you. All right. And um, the configuration and enrollment um, growth group will be meeting in October, just as an organizational meeting with time to reconnect and talk about some topics that we know are going to come our way. So, any other working groups have a report? Yeah, we'll go around you, Bill, uh, real quick. Uh, <laughs> Uh, Sherry already talked about some of the uh, market up grain activities uh, going out, kind of getting the uh, profile of the project raised. Uh, we had some great press uh, the last month in kind of all the uh, big papers around um, the standard. I had a view from here column about a month ago that I did. Uh, Mountain Times, uh, two or three weeks ago, uh, was a feature story. And then Valley News had a great uh, piece. Uh, Francis Minus is the author there. But um, uh, building tours, uh, big thanks to Joe, Jim, um, for the uh, Thursday. Had a really good group of people come through the uh, the uh, middle school, high school building. Uh, got to see all the 
you know, warts and all as we went through. Uh, Josh, you run that tour, yeah. Um, but yeah, that was great. Probably about 30 people. Session went really well. And um, we'll do two more of those scheduled. Uh, next one will be September, um, sorry, that was September 28th. Next one will be October 26th. And then we'll do November 28th. So looking to really drive as many people on those tours as we can. So maybe you can have them bring space heaters. <laughs> Yeah, I was going to suggest having some later in the season too, if the boilers don't get transitioned over, and then we can really give them the, the full feel of what our students are experiencing when they're trying to learn in our middle school, high school campus. But yeah, uh, lots of momentum. I'm starting to see a lot more um, traffic on the websites too, um, kind of driving traffic to the FAQs and the new build stuff. Matt um, and Karen has her hand up too. Um, the did you take down names and towns that were represented by the 30 some odd participants? I'd be curious to know if we're getting like just Woodstock people or if we're getting people from all the towns. No, um, I, I let's see. Uh, there was a, a parent from Killington on the last tour. We all went around, Joe had everybody kind of introduced themselves. I think it was primarily Woodstock, but there was a situation. Uh, somebody from Reading. It yeah. was Killington. The majority of the folks were from Woodstock. Yeah, but you, you raise a good point. We're going to need to take the show on the road. Or we can't take the building on the road, obviously. You know. I think it would be helpful if the board members could come uh, up with uh, a proposal for what's the best forum to meet in the town hall in the various towns or to um, have a town specific meeting or more general. I think that that's one thing that we want to make sure we are making the effort in offering to go to these town meetings and when they are and, and all of that. So if the board members from the other towns could help out with that, it would be useful. Um, I, mean, I know Marlena um, has, she has a lot of things. There's the Prosper Valley slash West meal on Saturday night. And then I think you and I and Marlena got a man table through those three sessions. And if there are other events like that in the towns, that would be good to have a table there. Um, with the, the representatives from each community present as well. Good question. Um, so do you have a sense of that yeah. people were undecided or negative about it and changed yeah. their mind? Yeah, or... that's, uh, I would say about half of the people at the sessions were you know parents who were probably you know in support and the other half were uh, maybe a little bit older, um, didn't know a whole lot going in. Uh, but I can say that I knew uh, of at least one person who was voiced you know, vocal opposition to the project in the past, who by the end of the session was saying, this is great, didn't realize you guys were as far along as you are with this, looks like it's going to happen, you covered all your bases, um, I'm on board. And that's really, you know, gratifying when you get some of those moments. Um, how many of those would be in I'm just curious also, are you presenting that information about how if you don't do it, what the budget Correct. looks like as well? Same. Because I have had people come over to me three or four people and say they were not and i started to tell them that but i think you're seeing it I'm yeah seeing it. it's the same uh presentation that i gave at the yeah. last board meeting with yeah. the three right. colored lines and you know what happens if we you know we're able to magically um not have to spend any money that's the yellow and then the red what happens if we fix the problems that are known and then blue what happens if we build a new building so those are the slides that we show right. I, I think once people lay eyes on the building yeah. it, they're they're changed Really, okay. from from the outside, it looks fine. When you start walking through it and actually looking at it, it makes the red line a reality. It does. Corinne. Yeah, thanks. I just wanted to ask how, because um, I think I somehow missed that there was the tours were starting up again. Um, so I'm I'm curious how that's being advertised, and and I could certainly like reinforce that via the listserv. But are there other avenues um, that those dates are going out? on it, it has been on the listserv i know it's been on the barnard one um yeah. several times news so that's all the elementary the news. newsletters the, the valley okay. news um you know uh, ran those dates uh so that's good and we have a handout too that we gave at the green and we'll give as well on uh, at the prosper valley uh dinner Sounds maybe good. we should go to feast of feast of field and then <laughs> yeah <laughs> That's over now, unfortunately. Oh, <laughs> um, yeah, I'll make sure I look out for that and kind of do a yeah, like a reinforced like, all right, Barnard folks, you know, go to go to these, go to one of these. 
30. Um, oh, yeah. and then okay. All right. I see Anna and then Bryce. What's the feasibility of getting a recording of one of these tours so that we can make a longer video than what we have now that might be more comprehensive for folks who can't show up in person for either of those meetings? Yeah, I think it's in the works. Our, uh, Marlena and our communications group kind of debriefed after the last uh, building tour, and that was one of the ideas was to, I mean, it's, it's more powerful if you're in person, but, you know, for those who can't make it or don't make it, and you want to have something to show. Brilliant. Thanks. Uh, Bryce? Um, yeah, I was just going to comment. The last, it's it's my fault too. I noticed that it was getting advertised on the, the Woodstock, uh, Bridgewater, and Pomfret listservs the last the week leading up to it, but it was not on the Barnard one, and I meant to forward it. Um, so, and then also I wasn't sure if you're using, because Killington doesn't have a listserv, but they have front page forum, and I didn't happen to notice that. So just throwing out that I know for things that I do, I kind of blanket them all, but front page forum hits Pittsfield and Killington more so than any listservs, I think. Right. Yeah. I was like searching through my listserv, our listserv. I didn't, I didn't see it there, but. Yeah, no, it was just as bad that I didn't forward it. I should have, I saw it and I was going to, I was going to message you guys and be like, oh, you forgot Barnard. And then I just, I forgot. So that's, I will pay attention we'll to catch, We'll catch the next one. Yeah. <laughs> uh, Sam? Um, yeah, I am, I know a lot. I, I really need to make a spreadsheet. I have a spreadsheet, like I have it in my head of all the different ways to spread the word about things. Who has listserv, who has French port, front porch forum, who has Facebook groups that they follow more. Like when I say who, I mean, which towns um like for instance i'm pretty sure um plymouth has like a, a it's a facebook group that like a lot of people look at um also i was on the communication um uh sub uh committee when we first did the tours and if i'm remembering correctly there is already some kind of video that was made yeah. from those tours and yeah. also right ben yeah we've got one up on the website now it's the one that uh, bob hager is you know narrating and it shows yeah. a lot of the problems but yeah it's, uh, so there, there is a video so the, it, it does already exist right yeah, yeah. some but I, I think the idea is maybe do a longer Sure. Um, sort of a shot. I think one of the more powerful things on the tour, we get a lot of feedback, was when you were talking about how, um, you know, standing in the gym and explaining why the snow loads, like the building's not rated for modern snow loads. Why? Because in the 50s, we just relied on the heat of the building to melt the snow, you know, to off the roof and, you know, and catch it in the downspouts. Now we know that we're, we're, we need to conserve heat. So we've insulated, but now we don't have a, a building that can hold the snow load. That's uh, the kind of thing that you could put on a video. I think would convey very well. Elliot, can I, ju I just ask? Just remind me what on the list or what? How is how is the messaging? How does it go? Because I'm wondering. Do you, do you remember how it says? Because I've seen it, but I don't remember what it says. It says how you, yeah. It starts out with "I'm curious about okay. the condition of the building." Okay. Uh, something like that. Yeah. But yeah. I, I, I would go with I'm, those kind of things. Like, you want to see how bad our building is? I mean, something <laughs> like you know, really. Catching right that will. Yeah. Did you watch the short video that went with the post? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> we stopped pulling punches. <laughs> okay. Sam, if, perhaps you could uh, share your uh, information with Marlene. She may not have <laughs> like the Facebook pages and all of that. And if she's not, she's not on Barnard. I know Barnard and Pomfret usually come out together. Yeah, no, I, I know I need to put that, that together. And I, yes, I will. I, I've been saying it for a while now. And it's funny. And it's all only, it only takes me two minutes. Um, But uh, yeah, I will, I will definitely make sure to get on that. 
Great, thank you. Did Anna have her hand up? Uh, Anna, yeah, I, I did put it back up. If there's verbiage that other folks have put on Front Porch Forum or listservs, um, I, I'm going to post to the Reading Front Porch Forum. But if that wheel has already been created, if someone could share that with me so I can just copy paste, I would really appreciate it. OK. Thanks. Mar Marlene is the kind of point person on all these these items. So um, it's a good reach out. Um, I'm happy to, Mar uh, to email her on behalf of all the towns and just ask that she make sure she's getting them all that she needs them. Sam is the key on a lot of that contact information, too. And I promise everyone that um, I will be more uh, responsive starting in November. <laughs> I promise, okay? Like, uh, yeah, totally foliage, it, just, it kicks my butt. So, um, and it started early this year. So, um, I I swear for new members on the board, I am I really am a more responsive board member. It's just the months of September and October are always kind of rough. Um, but I will I will be on my A game at least more of my A game uh in November. So thank you for your patience. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Any other working groups? Okay, at this time, can we have a motion to approve the minutes from the previous meeting? So moved. Second. Thank you, Lana. And Sam seconded it. Thank you. Um, all in favor, say aye. Right. Aye. 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 Anyone opposed? All right, thank you. Um, we have time now for public comment, if there's anyone that would like to speak. Your time. Um, I actually would like to speak. Uh, public comment. All right, Sam. Um, I had a number of well, not a number. I had a couple of um fellow sophomore um high school parents reach out to me regarding the um, frustration with the driver's ed situation and they're not being a teacher currently. And uh, the advertising for that, I guess apparently it wasn't being advertised, but now it is being advertised, so that's great. Um, but also um, something to do with like the ticket reimbursing system being confusing and um, not really um, friend, like not really, I can't think of another word, but user friendly for um, parents to navigate um, to get reimbursement for the program. So I guess I and my I am not looked done driver's ed yet for my kid. It's just what I've been being told by other parents. Um, so I think um, I guess a little bit more communication along that, and um, I'm happy to see that the position is now being advertised. Uh, to be filled. So that's good too. So, yeah, that's it. All right. Thank you. Any other public comment? Yes, Matt. Um, I'll make one. So, I'm no longer on the policy committee, but I would encourage and love to see the policy committee work on the sports uh, policy that was, um, was being drafted. And one of the issues uh, on the teams on campus that's impacted is the mountain bike team. Um, they've been a team for seven years. They have sent uh, two kids to nationals who will probably go on to be Olympians. They are like the reigning champs in the Vermont Youth Cycling League. They had 35 students last year, I think 33 this year. I think they have more girls than any other team in Woodstock. Um, but the coach has gone seven seasons without a stipend. And the kids are not recognized on this week in sports, and they're not recognized on the school Instagram. And these are kids who are incredible athletes who put in as much, if not more time than any varsity football player. Um, and they're not being allowed to, you know, use things like the bulletin boards, that, like this week in sports that tells the other students when they're having an event. And I just, at this point, I'm just like, okay, it's not a VPA sport. Uh, but do we as a school have to treat them as sort of a second class club 
So if it comes to the board, I would I would really encourage you guys to to think about that team. I would strongly second that. Thank you. And I since it's not since, it, since it's not a uh, regularly uh, recognized October 14th is a Saturday and we'll be hosting um, the Vermont Youth Cycling races at Mount Peg. And if you get a second to come out and see what our students are doing, it's I can't keep up with them. And that's very embarrassing for me because I try to keep up with everybody. And our student mountain bikers are absolutely incredible what they do. Absolutely incredible. Thank you. All right. Um... I believe we do have one executive, oh, two still, that will take care of that one. But uh, there were three, and there two. Okay. <laughs> we do need to go into executive session, and um, Jim will stay for the first one. And Brad will stay with me. Brad will stay as well. Oh, yes. Do we need a motion to go into executive session number two? Uh, yep. Yeah. I will make that motion. Uh, it's okay if you want to uh, you'll entertain a uh, amendment to your motion. It's for a uh, it's a contractual. What do we call this again? Contractual matter. A uh, legal matter. Legal. Okay. Legal Absolutely. Matter. I amend my motion to include the legal matter subject of our executive session. Have they muted themselves again? Yes. Yes. Yeah. We have uh, exited executive session with no uh, no action taken, and I need a motion to enter a, an executive an executive session to discuss it and wrap the matter. So moved. Second. All right. Um, do we have a motion coming out of the executive session? I uh, hereby move that the employment separation agreement as presented is accepted and the board chair and vice chair are authorized to execute it on behalf of the board. I will do second. We, do we start recording again? Yes. Yep. Is who seconded it, please? Anna. Uh, okay. And all in favor, say aye. 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 Any opposed? All right, we then need to finish up with our reflection. What did we do well and what could we do better? I think the meeting went quick. I like doing this. Yeah. Three executive sessions Very in well. two hours. Very well. Yes, well, when we, we have budget ahead of us yet. Yeah. <laughs> and Matt, you're going to send the minutes to um, Raina. Well, I'm doing that now. Okay, yep. great. Thank you. Uh, Bryce. Um, I just want to, I guess, go back, even though they're not here, but maybe they'll watch the recording. Um, and just, I think we should all appreciate, for, for those of us, especially that have been here for a few years, the, the detail given by finance. And, and I know, Ben, you play a part in that, but for, with Jim, and then also the information from uh, RAF, you know, about the, the students' information. It's gotten a little better every year, but I think it's finally getting to a point where we can look at this data year over year and help us inform decisions for, for whether it's us or future board members, you know, but having that, uh, that uh, student data broken down by town, school, all those different things, we haven't had it to that degree ever, you know? So I think we're just finally getting to this place where, again, it just, it really helps us because we've had these questions where we're like, well, yeah, we, we kind of have this and that, but not, not as much as they're able to. And, and this, it's just really helpful for me. So I really appreciate that. So shout out to them when they watch this recording or I'll tell, tell Sherry that I can watch it, but. <laughs> That'll be in the minutes. Yeah. Adam? I would just, I was going to echo what um, Bryce is uh, sharing. I have vivid flashbacks of a meeting at Killington Elementary as a board member probably four or five years ago that probably went till about midnight um, in which there was oh, no okay. kind of timeliness of it was just a wallop of this is our request and we need you to vote on it now. And um, mm -hmm. I, the kind of that's like night and day compared to where we've been over the last couple of years. Um, 
and then a comment that you know in the six years i've been on the board i've never been in and out of a, a general board meeting with three executive sessions in less than two hours and on yeah. that note i'd like to make a motion to adjourn yeah <laughs> that I'll meeting that. was awful oh my god second for that second. Uh, second by john all in favor uh, aye. 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 All right, 8.21, we have adjourned. Oh, my evening, you're welcome. Thank you, everybody.